Welcome back. It's still the breakfast uh, to first major conversation this morning. Aviation workers protesting uh, the sack of their colleagues have shut down the Murtala Mohammed Airport Lagos Terminal 2. Other uh, protesting workers, uh, aviation workers rather, of the Air Transport Services Senior Staff Association of Nigeria has shut down the terminal over the sacking of their colleagues by By Courtney Aviation Services Limited. A day before the strike, some domestic airlines issued travel advisories early Tuesday morning uh, to passengers scheduled to fly from the domestic terminal of the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, also known as MMIA2. Now, uh, in Lagos, ahead of the strike, which they feared would disrupt the flight operations of the day. As Mane advises passengers departing Lagos uh, to or from Lagos to check in very early uh, yesterday morning so they will not miss their flights. A statement signed by its management and put up on its official Twitter handle, the airline said it was monitoring the situation. Another airline, Eboom Air, in another statement signed by its management warned that already uh, Murtala Mohammed Airport 2 had at, at the time they were sending the message out been shut down by their labor union. But what's behind all of this? Well, the union had last week accused uh, by Courtney Aviation Services Limited, uh, operator of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport 2 terminal, of what it calls a witch hunt following the company's sack of 37 workers. Uh, the union alleged that by Courtney, rather than implement certain conditions of service both parties had agreed to in 2021, resorted to the sacking of the association's members in its establishment. So joining us to look at this and analyze these developments, we have Olumde Ohio, who is the Assistant Secretary General, Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative. He's an aviation analyst in Lagos. Uh, Olumide, thank you very much for your time and good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Um, uh, you know, this, this issue between by Courtney and, of course, the aviation workers is a company. Um, does it have a right to fire um, whoever it wants to fire, whenever it wants to fire? Bearing in mind that by Courtney is a private sector uh, company, not a government agency. Well, um, the, uh, the uh, company has a right to hire and fire. And, um, and I have reasons not to give... Uh, uh, not to tell us why they have fired their uh, their staff, or, and also why they have hired the staff. Uh, it's a it's a private organization. It's not publicly quoted, so uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it has its own uh, rules of engagement. Again, um, some of the some of the staff are members of the union. That we must get clear, and that union is the air trans air transport services senior staff association of Nigeria. Those were embarked on that uh, blockade yesterday. So those those staff were uh, being members of the union were the ones that were sacked. Now, what was the reason? Um, uh, I I I I really can't find what the reasons are, but I know there have been this um, pushback and uh, back and forth between the uh, Atan and uh, union and the management over the sack uh, over the over the sacking of those uh, thirty members. Uh, not all are you know members, but some of them, the you know members, were part of the thirty that were sacked. They were first suspended. They were at home for they were uh, to join the suspension. That they let off uh, an email was sent uh, uh, changing the suspension to sack. And um, the unions went out yesterday. I, I think they had been told maybe they could resolve the issue before uh, by using the last option, which is available, which is uh, embarking on the total strike and um, blockade of. Um, of the organization which happened yet we have lost a little bit uh, because of technical issue there it happens from time to time we'll try to contact him as quickly as we can um but uh, he was making a point mercy that uh, they have a right to hire and uh, fire um you know i was listening to some commentary uh, on my way to work this morning and someone was saying no the um the strikes have become too much you know anybody any group union has a uh, an issue and they embark on strike and most of these strikes um, uh, actually um, <laughs> are na national sabotage, economic sabotage. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy that people are being affected now and Nigerians are saying, hey, wait a minute, you have, okay, I think we have him back. Uh, um, Olumide Ohio, are you there please? Can you hear me?
Very well, I can hear you. Fantastic. Yes, thank you, you very much. You. Yes, thank you very much. So please continue with the point you were making. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, please go on. Yes, like I said, that the, 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 there was the back and forth between the unions and the management uh, over the sack of those guys. Those guys were, they were the, the, the 30, 30 of them. Some of them are members of the union, uh, Air Transport Services uh, Association. So that, that's the, the, the action. If they were not part of the union, maybe that stuff wouldn't have come, come in place. But because some of them were part of the unions, the unions had to come out and defend their members. Was the action of the union right? Well, um, I, I, they have a right to defend their members, but also don't have a right to disturb other businesses and uh, incur pain on, on other uh, businesses within the airport and passengers in particular. But the industry is in a dead state now. We cannot phantom uh, or have that stra uh, stra uh, that's energy now to take more pains for, for passengers and organizations within the industry. So, um, uh, I mean, in all that you're saying is that uh, the union actually acted contrary without following due process. And however, uh, it obstructed other business activities. Will there be any sort of, you know, compensation or, you know, legal action? Because this might just also just be a lead, you know, to other unions where uh, we expect people to act irrational. Well, you're yeah, breaking up, but... So I'm asking, uh, I'm saying that from your analysis, you're saying that, uh, you know, it's, it's not uh, legal. Uh, the union didn't follow due process as much as they have a right to, you know, to protest, but they don't have a right to obstruct other businesses. So uh, will there be any re recompense or, you know, compensation? Because a lot of persons were stranded yesterday. Some people, you know, missed their flight to important appointment, you know, business dealings and what have you. Is there going to be any sort of penalty? Olumide, can you hear us? You know, so Kofi, um, you know, let's talk about this. So, so this is what it is. Some, as much as we have, you know, right to protest grievances, whatever it is, within a certain sphere, but um, how do you explain the fact that some people you know, were disrupted. I mean, you talk about activities, economic activities or whatever activity. A lot of persons were headed to their different destination for several, you know, reasons. I'm sure that people had meetings, business meetings, you know, interviews, what have you. But, but you know, so will there be any sort of compensation or should there be any kind of, uh, uh, you know, compensation or punishment to this particular action because it's okay you know to act in a certain way but what happens when you know that right now begins to infringe on another person's right because that's what it is uh, how come those who had booked for flight those people who actually booked for their flight had booked for their flight prior to yesterday and so <laughs> what business you know do they really have why couldn't they you know get to their destination it's, it's quite of limited do we have you now well, we will, we're still, uh, you know, hoping that we establish contact back with our guests and, you know, share his thoughts. And uh, we know that there's a lot of, you know, a lot going on in different industries and sector. And the aviation industry is not left out of all of this. But yes, it is protests left too many persons stranded. Looking at the concerns, are there other ways that this would have been handled, you know, without shorting activities at the airport, without disrupting, you know, activities because it led to, you know, suspension of flight and people couldn't, you know, go about their normal business. Any sort of compensation, should there be any sort of, you know, punishment and uh, how should, you know, unions actually act? Is there a procedure that they should follow? These are some of the questions we're hoping to get answers. Uh, for as we proceed, but but quickly, what, what do you really think? Talking about union and what they should do in terms of, you know, um, going about protesting, and demanding yes, their rights. Um, Mercy, I, I was saying, you know, what um, I'm, I'm happy. Um, You're happy in what sense? Yes, I'm happy because um, you know Nigerians usually rise to the defense of unions. Um, I mean, <laughs> it, it's okay, it's okay. Um, government is not always. They've not always covered themselves in glory. You know, the federal government especially, they've not always covered themselves in glory. But you see, sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for. You know, if you go into the details of some of these things the unions do, you shut down schools for a whole number of months, all right, 
and then you know even when issues have been uh, negotiations have gone to a particular extent um still you have the power to say we're not going back to school and sometimes when when some people say okay let's look at this matter and see is there even anything that we can we can say okay this striking you know workers they can also take a blame for people say ah you you're like they say siding with the government let's enjoy it you know now it's almost like a free for all we're giving license to 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 the unions to to do whatever they want so um striking workers now if they fire a private company fires people says we don't want you to work for us again they shut down an entire airport it is not done mercy it is not done and there needs to be some a conversation about the responsibility and the proper way to address industrial issues by these unions i'm happy let's enjoy it because this is what we come we, we we promote we celebrate these people all in the name of government should do the right thing but there's also responsibility on the part of these unions as well but we celebrate it i'm happy they, they need to shut for they should shut down more airports is what but, but would you be saying that, would you saying, be saying this if you had saying, a flight to catch yesterday? I'm not saying people should not protest. I'm not saying that you know people may not even go to the extreme to to do certain things to get government to do the right thing. But in some situations, you know, we can also say, okay, can you while you're protesting, you know, do A, B, C, D, E? All right. Um, this you know some of them have pushed it too far. Let's look at the the, the electricity workers in Abuja, who because of promotion exam shut the entire national grid mercy because of promotion exam shut the entire national grid they even filmed themselves shutting it we hear by um five four three two we shut bruh they shut it down the whole nation went people who were on life support people whose livelihood maybe they sell pure water they have to everything done you know so um do we have mr ohio back on the line yeah i'm here okay yeah yes, sorry yes. Sorry about it happens. It happens. We also sorry about that. Um, uh, so you were making a point, um, which would like you to land on maybe in a sentence or two, so we can move to the next question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said earlier, um, the, the you don't have a right to go on strike, but you don't have a right to impede other people's businesses and uh, inflict pain on the on Nigerians. Again, uh, when you go on strike at this time, when the industry is in their state, you need to measure your actions. Uh, well, the same, you, you, have, you have stopped airlines from flying yesterday. Uh, this airline and other organizations within that timing that, that could not work also would sack some staff that would be even more than the 30 people you are protecting and are supposed to be protecting all Nigeria. So I think there must be some moderation and uh, there was, they, they, they would need to find a middle way of, of, of using that last option without obstructing other people's business. If that, if that picketing and uh, had affected only the BSL management, it would be, the opera would not have been much. But you here, yeah, 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 here's an industry that's already in a dead state. We have a high security situation. The Nera is depleting every day. So much pains. Then the region brought some pains to passengers and some operators yesterday. That wasn't fair. I think that 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 strike wasn't probably managed. Then they were able to achieve their result, but that strike wasn't probably managed. Do you do you do you sense some sort of um, witch hunt here? Um, because by Courtney Aviation Services Limited, the management um, had an agreement with the, with the affected. Uh, union of workers and they reneged on it according to what they're saying and that after two weeks after asking them to proceed on leave um gave the affected workers including the union's chairman they are part of those who've been uh, who are affected the union's chairman uh the union secretary the union's treasurer the union's women leader okay and uh this are uh, of the the by coordination services limited chapter termination letters do you think do you suspect there's some uh, targeted this is targeted at unionists people who are members of this aviation union at by courtney uh by by courtney aviation services limited yeah I, yeah i i think they had some problems with the unions because uh, when you look at the the those sack almost every member of the executive of the union were asked to go home and uh, you, when you when you sack workers, you sack workers based on the uh, productivity, uh, co competence, and uh, other related issues to work. But when you take the whole executive of the ESCO, uh, that means there was there was there was a dispute between the the uh, management and the uh, and the union. And the union went the, the management was very drastic in taking out all the union members. That that was that wasn't a very um, 
good thing to do uh, in terms of industrial relations and if you wanted peace you should have you know, measure your uh, measure your arrows and then take 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 your bullets one after the other i think that the, the misfire there again the, uh, the, the management did not come to the public. They did not tell us the story until when the uh, airport had, had been shut down. But this issue has been going on. You know, have been coming. I've been, uh, been issuing press releases, warning of uh, using the last uh, the last straw, which is the strike, uh, as, as as a weapon for for getting results from the management. All the other people did not hear anything from the management until when that place was shut down yesterday, and they did not release the statement until about late in the evening. He was not able to tell their clients and their passengers using the terminal that they had issues. They did not make any any form of public communication to 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 help the passengers uh, know there was a problem and there's a need for them to go to the other airport. Why airlines were trying to communicate with their passengers to the, the other terminal? The management of that airport did not do anything. So I expect them to to lead lead that process of compensating passengers, compensating operators, and every other business that was affected in that terminal and yesterday. You can't just be collecting money from people, collecting rent, increasing charges, and yet we will not provide services. I think the uh, uh, management should accept uh, responsibility for yesterday's uh, catastrophe. So, um, with all of this now, uh, we understand that the union have a right to protest, but of course not following due procedure. Do you think uh, there's going to be a penalty, some sort of punishment for you know, this particular action? impeding on the but right it, of it, other it, people. It will be very difficult for me to use the words not following due process or due procedure because uh, uh, the, um, the Boston management said they had a judgment from the industrial courts stopping the strike. You know, said they did not see a copy. You don't have a right to go on strike, but they didn't have a right to disrupt business of other uh, uh, companies and passengers that had nothing to do with basketball management. That is my position, and that's my point. And that composition must come. It must come from the basketball management for now. That while the industry players and the uh, uh, aviation security team of all the airports must devise a way to ensure that this does not happen. Uh, again, we cannot suffer people who are innocent for offense of, uh, of, of the management of one, one company. That, that, was, that was right. I, I was not comfortable with that. Looking at passengers stranded yesterday, getting the time and now I had to shut down. And move to the other terminal. Someone didn't even get information, and that terminal had only one, 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 one of the machines working. So there was there was bedlam at the other terminal yesterday, making this couple of projects that already paid. Airlines lost their money yesterday. Catering services lost their money. Grand handlers lost their money. Uh, the the, the, the other businesses within the terminal were not able to operate yesterday. Even those who did that could not go home because the gates were locked. That wasn't right. That, 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 was, that, was, that was the only problem I have with the union there. If you take a picture on those who are not related to the, the bustle management. The, the aviation sector alone really is uh, one of the few sectors that has its own ministry. You know, um, uh, we don't have a we have a ministry of transportation, but aviation has its own ministry. Um, do you think the aviation minister has, has done well in allowing this matter to get to this point where an entire airport, this is the most modern I think a local terminal or the busiest local terminal in Nigeria is being shot. Let me start that having our own ministry is not a blessing to us. Uh, I think we just it's just a way of um, it's, 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 it's how close you are to the government in power that determines uh, whether they become ministry. By the time this government started, we we're under the Ministry of Transportation, and we did not want the minister because of the interference we've seen in the past. And today, we don't have board of directors in any of the aviation agencies because we have a very powerful minister that is directly with the presidency and has made those uh, and, and made all the agencies report to him, play, play, play along on his own, on, on some card. So we are not really happy having a minister of aviation. What we wanted was just give us let us be transport uh, transportation ministry. Let us have an independent independent. Uh, regulator in the Nigerian Aviation Authority, and let us have a commercial run uh, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and a professionally run NAMA and other agencies. But what, what, what do we have? We've got a lot of interference from the, from the ministry and from the minister and his team, and uh, I think that has not really helped the industry. But coming to the strike of yesterday, I don't think uh, that had anything to do with Minister of Aviation. It was between the, the a private company, uh, uh, Basel, and and their unions. What what the industry might need to do now is uh, with, with what has happened yesterday in order to mitigate and prevent such recurrence whereby innocent travelers and the uh, uh, organizations not involved are being penalized and punished and made to go we have uh, um, lose money and uh, uh, not to operate. We need to work out with that uh, to ensure that the all you know future you know the activities do not affect organizations and passengers. All right. Uh, no related organizations, I mean. No related organizations. All right.
All right. Thank you so much, uh, Olumide Huayo. Um, it's been a pleasure having you. And uh, as always, anytime you're here uh, with us on The Breakfast, it's always an expert analysis from you as far as the issues in the aviation sector are concerned. We just hope that uh, this matter will be sorted out today um, so that uh, people can resume the uh, no, using... It, it was sorted out. it was sorted out last night. Last night. Okay. So this yeah, morning sorted, yeah. is, is the... Um, MM2, uh, the local terminal there, is it? Um, yeah. Or oh, are people still using open. the GAT? No, it's not fully open. The, the airlines have started, we started, started operating this morning. But we just need, we, we cannot have a recurrence and we need to work towards that. All right. All right. Thank you so much. There's a lot of issues in the aviation sector. I wish you had time to look into all of them. But we thank you so much for your time. Uh, Lumide Huayo is the Assistant Secretary General of Aviation Safety uh, Roundtable Initiative. is an aviation analyst and research live from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll talk fuel subsidy. There's a lot going on there, and uh, we'll have an analyst join us to look at the issues. Uh, stay with us. <laughs>